Well, Himawari's a gin Cherokee. On to the video. But before we get into that video, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page. Did you think I would actually skip the intro? You think I'm gonna stop doing intros because a couple of brain rotted 12 year olds can't sit still for three minutes? Oh, real content starts at 3.30. If you can't sit through me setting up a video, go somewhere else. Go watch an AI generated voice read you posts from Reddit AITAs. Yeah, our titles are insane, but our content is genuine and our titles are always derived from some part of our video. Here's a little free piece of content advice for all of you who want to be successful on YouTube one day. Find the most salacious and clickable thing about your video and make that the title. The number one most important thing for success on YouTube is the thumbnail and the title. So long as the content you create is genuine and is tied into the title somehow, you will get more views and therefore more success. That's why I am currently the largest Naruto-centric active YouTube channel on this platform. Anyways, chapter eight of Boruto is out, which means it's time for everybody's favorite part of the month, emotionally recovering and trying to make sense of the fire that Kishimoto just dropped on us. And my God, did we have some potential fire dropped on us this month. The ending of chapter eight of Two Blue Vortex is the most important 10 pages we've gotten in Boruto's entire story up until this point. And Kurama died like 30 chapters ago. But Kurama's death being the second most impactful thing that's happened in Boruto's story makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that what has now taken the first spot might be a path to his reincarnation. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Kurama may return from the grave, and this time, it's real. Now, I say this time it's real because we've been theorizing on ways that Kurama could be brought back to life for what feels like at least a year now. The craziest thing about Chapter 8 of Two Blue Vortex is not that Kurama may come back to life, but how? Because while many people, myself very much included, have theorized that things like King Kaku and Ginkaku being released from the Beni Shago, and therefore them reintroducing a vestige of Kurama's chakra to the planet could be a way that Kurama would be brought back to life, or that the Kurama chakra mode pill that was made by high-level Anbu dissenters in Sakura Hedon could be reverse engineered and possibly given to Naruto to re-kickstart Kurama's chakra within him, or even that Naruto would be able to become the host of the juvenile ten tails in the Kara dimension and therefore become the next Sage of Six Paths. And after ascending to a legendary level of power where he's now granted things like the creation of all things ability, Naruto could, with a now massive amount of chakra within himself, recreate Kurama. And while all of those were popular theories propagated by many YouTubers, myself very much included, almost no one saw the possibility of Himawari being the way that Kurama returns. You know, Except for me. Now, what am I talking about? Well, for those of you who haven't read the chapter yet, what are you doing here? But if you just like learning about the events of the chapter through me, which I've been told people actually do, Jura and Tidari, also known as Jigen and Sasuke Shinju, have made their way into Konoha looking for Naruto. And once they made the world's grisliest Christmas tree with a couple of border guards, Jura began to follow in Konoha what he believed was Naruto's chakra presence. Now, the reason that Jura believed he was following Naruto's chakra presence is because he was following Tailed Beast Chakra. And as Naruto is one of two Jinchuriki left alive, following Tailed Beast Chakra in Konoha, usually a pretty good way to find Naruto. However, when Jura got to the destination that he believed was Naruto, what he came upon was Himawari. And while for years I've theorized that Himawari would become a Jinchuriki, in fact, Himawari becoming a Jinchuriki was one of the first videos I ever made, I am afraid that I might not have been 100% accurate in my hypothesis, because I believed that Himawari would become a Jinchuriki for Shukaku. While that is still a definitive possibility, there is now the possibility that she is the Jinchuriki of much more than just Shukaku. In fact, there's the possibility that Himawari is a Ten Tails Jinchuriki, or the Jinchuriki of Kurama. There are a lot of possibilities, and today we're going to explore those possibilities and what they might mean for the future of both Boruto and Himawari. But before we get to exploring any possibilities, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you like long intros and anime topics, then you're going to love my other channel, 
the Weeb Commander, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk all other anime. And if you like cold intros and talks about anime, then you're going to love my anime podcast, New Talks Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime and manga this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you like long intros, you can pick up our brand new t-shirt in our merch store. The only thing longer than this intro is my money at otakusanonymous.net. Once again, I haven't made that t-shirt yet. Just hoping Cody does it. My editor makes commission on all merch sales, so it's up to him. But before we get into all that, today we gotta talk about a brand new sponsor to the page, G Fuel. Yeah, that's right, baby. We finally got the G Fuel sponsorship. And today we're talking about G Fuel Madness, also known as G Fuel's biggest sale of the year, because G Fuel is currently undergoing a massive BOGO sale. I mean, if you were to go to G Fuel right now and buy one tub of G Fuel, you'd get a whole other tub for free. Yeah, you're hearing me right. Double the servings, double the flavor, double the energy for the price of one. But why G Fuel? Why now? Well, if the BOGO sale isn't enough to convince you that it's time to hop on the G Fuel train, how about their incredible flavors? Like their Sage Mode Energy Formula, or their Rest in Peace Akira Toriyama Kamehameha Energy Formula. And all these incredible flavors come with zero sugar, zero jitters, and zero crash. Not to mention clean energy, laser focus, and 40 servings per tub. See, my personal favorite flavor is the new Naruto Sage Mode flavor obviously but not just because naruto's on the tub but because g fuel's zero sugar formula gives me the energy that i need to film two youtube videos a day for you animals and because quite frankly the taste mm, simply cannot be beat so whether you're trying to explore the possibilities of what Sarada's MS abilities might be, or staying up late playing some ranked with your friends there's no better option to keep you fueled and G Fuel. So what are you waiting for? Head to G Fuel today and take part of G Fuel Madness and capitalize on that crazy BOGO sale. There's never been a better time to get energized. So, Himawari is getting her long-awaited for power-up. And while over the years we've argued whether or not that power-up would come in the form of a Tensei Gon, or a Tailed Beast, or maybe not at all, it appears as though we've finally been given our answer. Himawari has Tailed Beast Chakra, but in what capacity? See, over two years ago, when I released my video hypothesizing that Himawari would become the Jinchuriki of Shikaku, the idea wasn't founded in all that much. This was prior to Daemon showing interest in Himawari, and obviously prior to the events of Chapter 8 of Two Blue Vortex. In fact, the majority of my reasoning behind that theory is that I wanted to see it. That and the fact that I believed even at that moment that the writing was on the wall that Kishimoto did not want Boruto to be a hollow copy of Naruto. Now I'm talking about the people here, not the stories. And in fact, it seemed rather obvious that Kishimoto wanted Boruto to more resemble in Uchiha than his father. Now, as to which Uchiha I believe Kishimoto was trying to get Boruto to resemble, I wasn't entirely sure. Now, I'm fully aware it's Itachi, but back then it seemed as though it could have been Sasuke. But Kishimoto not wanting Boruto to turn out to be Naruto Jr. is the exact reason that Naruto and Hinata are the only members of the original Konoha 12 who had two kids. Because if one of them's not going to be Naruto, at least the other can be. And there's already a precedent for Kishimoto turning the females of this generation into Naruto copies, either through powers or sentiments with Sarada. Because while Sarada definitely doesn't have tailed beast chakra and therefore will never look like Naruto power-wise, sentimentally and emotionally, she aligns with Naruto better than anybody else in the story. So Himawari taking the tailed beast baton and running with it wouldn't be the craziest thing we've seen. That still leaves us with the burning question, what kind of Jinchuriki will Himawari be? And to many people, the knee-jerk reaction here, the easiest possible solution, is that Himawari will become the Jinchuriki of Shukaku. Because in the anime canon, Hidden Stone, Mud Clone, Anoki makes a son because he doesn't want the ninjas from the Hidden Stone dying something or another, but also there's something going on with Mitsuki arc. Mitsuki retrieval arc, I remember what it was called. We saw Boruto and Shinki work together to get Shukaku from the Hidden Sand to the Hidden Leaf. Now this is because at the time, Orishiki was flying around with his fishing rod trying to collect the tailed beasts. And Gara and the rest of the Hidden Sand believed that Shukaku would be safer under the care of Naruto than themselves. And so they sealed Shukaku inside of his teapot and sent him to the Hidden Leaf with 
Genin. And thus, at least for the last three years, at least according to the anime canon, Himawari and Shukaku have been living under the same roof in the Uzumaki Hyuga household, though Shukaku is sealed in a teapot, which is why he fits in the house. And more than the fact that they're just technically roommates, Himawari and Shukaku seem to be best friends. So the possibility of them becoming a Jinchuriki combo would work. Kind of. See, because while I say this is the easiest explanation to explain why Himawari could possibly have tailed Beast Chakra, it still leaves us with a ton of questions, most notable of which is how. See, just because Shukaku is living in a teapot that's in the Uzumaki Hyuga household doesn't mean that Himawari would end up with Tailed Beast Chakra. Well, Shukaku nowadays is probably the most human-friendly out of all of the Tailed Beasts, excluding Kiyuki. That doesn't necessarily mean he would be willing to be sealed away inside of Himawari, even though the two of them do seem to be friends. And to understand why this wouldn't happen, we A, need to think about Shukaku's history, and B, think about the politics behind why every Jinchuriki was ever made. See, when it comes down to tailed beast history, Shukaku's is probably the most tragic, as Shukaku was the only tailed beast not caught by Hashirama, as he was independently caught by the first Kazekage, at which point he was sealed away into his first Jinchuriki, Bunpuku, who was a monk from the Hidden Sand. But because everybody was afraid of Shukaku, and therefore by extension Bunpuku, Bunpuku was also sealed away way inside of a teapot. And thus, for the entirety of Bunpuku's natural life, the two of them just sat inside a teapot. After Bunpuku died, Chukaku had a second Jinchuriki problem that bridged the gap between Bunpuku and Gara. And while he was in this Jinchuriki, the second Kaze Kage, Shimon, began to do experiments on him to try and figure out the secret behind his magnet release. However, it wasn't until the third nameless Kaze Kage came around that the Hidden Sand finally cracked the code on Shukaku's magnet release, which is why the third Kaze Kage could use iron Sam. After the second Jinchuriki Shukaku had, he was placed into a boy. And that boy was Gara, who was perpetually tortured by his horrible fourth Kazekage father, Rasa, who not only put Shukaku into Gara to make him the perfect weapon to boost the Hidden Sand's power amongst all hidden villages, but also, unfortunately for Shukaku, was able to control gold dust, which is heavier than sand. So even when Shukaku was able to break out of Gara and try to rampage across the Hidden Sand, Rasa had the quite literal perfect kit to suppress him. And now, well, obviously, eventually Shukaku and Gara ended up as friends. Shukaku, through his own extraction, did almost end up killing that friend. And now, while well, Shukaku and Gara are still close enough that Shukaku continues to let Gara be able to control sand, something that is not tied into Gara's magnet release because sand isn't magnetic, I don't think Shukaku would be chomping at the bit to be sealed into somebody, especially somebody he sees as a friend. Not to mention that for the last hundred years or so, Jinchuriki have been made to capitalize on the combined strength of a ninja and a tailed beast, so that this combined strength can be used in wars. And as it currently stands, A, there's not really any conventional war going on right now, and B, there's no governing body in Konoha that would force Himawari, an 8 to 11 year old girl, to become a Jinchuriki of Shukaku. And thus, if Himawari is the Jinchuriki of Shukaku, it's something that Himawari and Shukaku did of their own volition, which could possibly happen, as they could have decided as a team that there's less chance that Shukaku gets tied up in something nefarious like the creation of a divine tree, but even that line of logic doesn't really work with Kurama dead, as there's a fair to good chance that the original nine-tailed beasts can no longer be brought together to form a ten-tails, as they are now not only essentially missing more than half of their original power, but if the last time that they were smashed together taught us anything, you need at least a little bit of chakra from each and every single one of the nine-tailed beasts. As as obviously the tailed beast in the fourth great shinobi world war didn't take the entirety of Kurama or Gyuki. Not to mention this possible argument falls apart even more when you consider the fact that Daemon's interest was piqued in Himawari before the time skip when Naruto was still around and Himawari was max eight years old or maybe like nine years old what's the gap between her and boruto i'm the naruto youtuber let's look this up three years she was 10. anyways therefore that is to say that whatever made himori interesting to daemon which we can now all pretty universally agree upon must have been her tailed beast chakra was around pre-time skip when naruto was still around and i seriously doubt that naruto would have allowed for his 10 year old daughter to become the jinchuriki of the tailed beast that drove gara insane so what does this leave us with well there's the Kurama pregnancy theory, which sounds like unfortunate furry fanfic the more that I say it out loud. He is a fox. Wait, no. They do, they do wolves? They gotta do foxes as well, right? I mean, it's, it's close enough. Low key. 
Krama fursuit would go kind of hard. And the Krama pregnancy theory is something that we've talked about a lot on this channel. And that theory, which I don't recommend you Google, is that Krama can be brought back to life through Himawari and Boruto, as they are the result of two generations of Jinchuriki smushing. See, this theory became popularized when people realized that both Boruto and Himawari have two whiskers, as opposed to Naruto's three, which felt like a weird artistic choice to make. If you're trying to confer that Naruto's blood is being watered down in them, why not have one of them have whiskers and the other doesn't, or they have whiskers on one side of their face, or something like that? Why just have one less whisker? Unless you're trying to denote a generational gap. And don't let me confuse you here. Naruto, being the Jinchuriki of Kurama, is not the reason he has whiskers, as Naruto had whiskers before he became the Jinchuriki of Kurama. Go back and watch the episode of his birth. He's born with whiskers. Therefore, the speculated reason that Naruto was born with whiskers is because Kushina was pregnant with Naruto while the Jinchuriki of Kurama, which tied Naruto and Kurama's chakra and souls together from the very start. And this is corroborated by the fact that neither Mito nor Kushina have whiskers. But the logical retort to this theory that will usually come up is that if Kushina being pregnant with Naruto while the Jinchuriki of Kurama gave him whiskers, then why doesn't Tsunade have whiskers? As Mito was more likely than not the Jinchuriki of Kurama while pregnant with Tsunade's parents. And therefore, by that line of logic, Tsunade, like Boruto and Himawari, should have two whiskers. But fortunately, we have an answer to this logical retort, which is... Mito probably wasn't the Jinchuriki of Krama while pregnant with Tsunade's parents. Well, pair it. See, Mito came into the picture as Hashirama's wife almost immediately after the founding of Konoha, as her marriage to Hashirama would cement the connection between the Senju and the Uzumaki, and immediately carve out a place outside of the land of whirlpools for the Uzumaki to settle. And now, not to be that guy, but if I was married to Mito or Hashirama, I'm hitting as soon as possible. And that's kind of what we believed happened. Because here's the thing, a three to five year old Tsunade met Hashirama, which means that Hashirama was Hokage for at least 25 years. And that's if you assume that he knocked up Mito within the first year of Konoha's founding. Now Hashirama being the first Hokage for even that long, messes with basically every idea we have of a Naruto history timeline. So to stretch Hashirama's time as the first Okage for longer than 25 years isn't really an option. And that's good for this theory, because Kurama didn't come to Konoha immediately after its founding. In fact, Kurama wasn't introduced to Konoha for years, as Kurama came into the picture of Naruto's history when Madara decided to abandon Konoha. And we know that Madara lived in Konoha for a couple of years, until of course Madara got the idea that the Senju were rising in power while the Uchiha were staying stagnant. And thus the Senju, like in the Warring States period, would use their newly found power to suppress the Uchiha. However, when Madara tried to galvanize the Uchiha to either leave Konoha or revolt against the Senju, they all just kind of booed him. And so he took his ball and he went home. However, Madara going home was actually him going to look for the natural walking disaster that had been found in the woods around Konoha. Because Madara understood that if he was able to tame that power, he would be able to defeat Hashirama. Except for the fact that it wasn't enough. Get absolutely shit on, nerd. I mean, yeah, Tobirama was there too, but that just makes it a 2v2. However, when you take all of this into consideration, that means that more likely than not, Mito had already given birth to Tsunade's parent before she ever became the Jinchuriki of Kurama. Now, all of this is to say that because of the rare circumstances of Naruto's birth, since being a pregnant female Jinchuriki is universally agreed upon to be a terrible idea, even for the person most suited to be a Jinchuriki, possibly in the history of Naruto, Kushida. But because love prevails, or possibly because Minato's swimmers were just as fast as he was, Kushina got pregnant while the Jinchuriki of Kurama. And thus Naruto has a connection with Kurama that goes beyond your standard human tailed beast Jinchuriki connection. Naruto's connection to Kurama is instead genetic. And thus any children that Naruto had would also inherently be genetically tied to Kurama. And thus Kurama would live on through his children one generation and one whisker removed. Now, if this is the reason that Himawari has tailed beast chakra, that would mean that technically through her and Boruto, Kurama still has chakra on earth. And as we all know, so long as a tailed beast still has chakra on earth, they will reform at some time or another. But 
It's been over three years since Kurama's death. So if this is the theory you decide to go with to explain why Himawari does have tailed beast chakra, you have to ask yourself the question, okay, well then why hasn't Kurama remanifested? On top of this, you also have to consider the fact that Kishimoto is trying to separate Boruto and Naruto. So if he was to give Boruto Kurama's chakra through the fact that Naruto is his father, that would kind of fly in the face of that. So where is Himawari getting this tailed beast chakra from? Well, Naruto but not in the way that you would expect. See, I gotta give props where props is due because I pulled this theory directly from my own comments. So if this turns out to be true, good job, wrecked MKV. And if it's wrong, well, that's probably because it's not my theory. But for real, as it currently stands, I believe this is the best possible explanation to explain where Himawari would have gotten Tailed Beast Chakra so similar to Naruto that Jura believed that he was looking at Naruto. See, it's been a long-standing theory on this channel that because both Hinata and Naruto have Otsutsuki Chakra through their connections to Hamura and Hagoromo, that they, when they decided to have a baby, were bringing together Hamura and Hagoromo's Chakra back together, essentially creating Kaguya. And because Boruto was then bored with a Chakra of basically a fully-blooded Otsutsuki, that is why he awoke the Jogon. And in fact, in one of our more recent videos, Boruto is the reincarnation of Kaguya, we explained how I'm awaking this Jogon Gone could actually draw a connection between Kakia and Shibai through the means of a chakra fruit. But if you want the rundown on that entire theory, go and watch that video. But we've had an even longer standing theory that that Otsutsuki chakra, when applied through the same principle to Himawari, would cause Himawari to awaken the Tensei God, as Himawari is a human born with Hyuga Byakugan, who possibly, through her parents, has Otsutsuki chakra, thus giving her all the required supplements to create a Tensei God. But if that was going to happen, it probably already would have happened. As a Tensei Gon, at least as it appeared to Toneri, isn't really something you turn on and off. I mean, sure, you can have it punched off, but that's only if the strongest version of Naruto sucks you straight in the chin. So what if Himawari, not yet awakening a Tensei Gon, shows us that all the Otsutsuki Chakra went to Boruto? and not her. Well, you could say, sounds like she got skimmed. And in a sense, I guess she kind of did. However, what if instead of Himawara getting the Otsutsuki Chakra, she got the Tailed Beast Chakra? But what Tailed Beast Chakra, you ask? Karamas? Well, kind of. See, this theory dictates that at the same time, that Naruto received chakra from Hagoromo, he also received chakra from all nine tailed beasts. Which makes sense, because as we all know, during the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, there was a time when Naruto was the host of all nine tailed beasts. Which is why in the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, Naruto could do things like use a lava release Rasen Shuriken. Because as we know, lava release is a Keke Genkai specific to Son Goku, the Four Tails. Now, while some people believed at the time that this was tied into the fact that Naruto had Sage of Six past chakra, chakra and therefore could access all the Keke Genkai created from the Ten Tails, Naruto has since, in Boruto, reused these Keke Genkai. As I believe in Boruto, he has once again used the lava release Rasen Shuriken, but it might not have been that one, I don't remember exactly. On top of this, we've seen in Boruto that Naruto still acts as a meeting point for all of the tailed beasts. And while all of the tailed beasts don't necessarily come to every meeting as some of them have given up on humans, Naruto still has the capacity to operate as a meeting place for all nine tailed beasts simultaneously, where he can communicate with all of the tailed beasts mentally inside of his own body, meaning that more than likely, all of the tailed beasts left vestiges of their chakra and power within Naruto, making Naruto, post the fourth great shinobi world war, a watered down version of a 10 tailed Jinchuriki. But not really, as each and every single one of these small vestiges of power was given to Naruto individually by an entity with an ego, and these small sections of power were never meant to be melted, and therefore they would never recreate a Tentails, because they're more meant to give Naruto access to their Keke Genkai, and to allow them to come to Naruto to talk about what's going on with the humans occasionally. However, all that doesn't matter to Himawari, who inherited this pseudo Tentails chakra, and to a degree, this makes sense. Naruto's power after the fourth great shinobi world war absolutely skyrocketed and you could say yeah but so didn't everybody else's naruto's was and still possibly is on a completely different scale naruto in the last just three years after the conclusion of the fourth great shinobi world war was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in a 1v1 against toneri in his tensei mode and that version of toneri with very little effort was strong enough 
to cut the moon in half. And Naruto tanked that shot with next to no issue. But the idea of Naruto being a pseudo Ten Tails raises some logical questions. Like, why wouldn't his appearance change? Why wouldn't he manifest other tailed beast forms? To which I ask, well, why would he need to? Let's not forget here that Kurama makes up more than 50% of the original Ten Tails power, and Naruto already has the ability to add the Kegagenkai of the other eight tailed beasts to things like his Rasengan or his Rasen Shuriken, which is all he needs from the other tailed beasts anyways. So there wouldn't be any real reason that he would need to manifest Saiken, so long as he can use Shukaku's Magnet Release, Son Goku's Lava Release, Kokyo's Boil Release, and so on and so forth. So, what if this pseudo Tentails Chakra was passed down to his daughter in lieu of the Otsutsuki Chakra? This would not only serve the purpose of making her massively powerful down the line, but it would also pique Daemon's interest in her, as he would be able to, like Jura, sense the latent power within her and figure out what that could mean for her future. And all the while, this would guarantee that Himawari would have the same tailed beast chakra signature as her father. Now, does this mean that Himawari is going to become the next Sage of Six Paths? No, but it could mean that she does have some of Kurama's chakra amongst her jumble, and therefore Himawari could serve as a way for Kurama to re-manifest. On top of it, it could mean that she has the ability to use all of the Kekagenkai that belonged to the tailed beasts. And while those Kekagenkai may not end up in Rasengan or Rasen Shuriken, I think Naruto is pretty adequately able to show us how powerful those Kekagenkai can be when added to other ninjutsu, like maybe the Gentle Fist. But Nick, if there's some of Kurama's chakra in Himawari, why hasn't he re-manifested yet? It's been three years. Well, one, since Kurama's death, we really haven't spent that much time with Himawari, so maybe, to her, he has. And two, more likely than not, the combination of all nine tailed beast chakras being passed from one generation to the other, from Naruto to Himawari, could possibly have fused those nine chakra signatures into one, into a pseudo Tentails. As, mind you, this chakra wasn't handed to Himawari, and this pseudo Tentails possibly wouldn't have Ego, and therefore definitely wouldn't have Kurama, and thus Kurama would truly only re-manifest if Himawari was able to capitalize on this pseudo Ten Tails power and find a way to separate that Ten Tails inside of her into nine individual Egos, which I guess would kind of make her a Sage of Six Paths. But as it currently stands, all we can say definitively is that Himawari has Tailed Beast Chakra, and that Tailed Beast Chakra made Jura think that she was Naruto. So, did she and Shikaku decide to do the fusion dance? Does Kurama live alongside her through her genetic code? Or was she the inheritor of the power passed to Naruto from all nine tailed beasts? Tell me what you guys believe is the most likely theory, or tell me if you have another theory in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I don't really care how it happens. I'm just happy we got a powerful Himawari. I feel like I've been waiting a lifetime. <laughs>